So I just talked about um, that SAP HANA provides a built-in graph engine. So there, there are ways to look at, for example, your, your transactional data from, from a network perspective, then leverage some built-in algorithms or custom procedures um, on the data analyzing your network. How does that look um, in a little bit more detail? Um, again, as I mentioned before, I mean, we are looking at a graph um, being a set of vertices and edges. And um, from, from a data management perspective, uh, perspective, we are looking at two data structures. So on the left-hand side, you see the data representing the vertices. So uh, we do have, uh, in our case here, authors and papers and stuff like that. And um, the blue data structure represents um, the edges. So in our case, for example, an, relationship between a document and an author and uh, that relationship is of type is authored by each vertex needs to have an identifier and the same is true for each edge and of course an edge needs to have a source and target information so essentially where where it comes from where it points to um, usually the data structures also um, represent attributes that describe um, the vertices, for example. So you have a name or you have a birth date or, or, or stuff like that. But um, the attributes are essentially optional. Now, the only thing that you need to have in place in order to expose your data to the graph engine is you need to create what we call a graph workspace, which is a catalog object, which essentially points to the table or the data structure where the edges are stored and the data structures where, where, where the vertices are stored and how they, they relate to each other. So that's essentially everything that you need to do. Um, of course, you can have more than one graph workspace, um, as this is just a, a kind of a virtual view into your data. Looking at um, this from, from an architecture perspective, so we just talked about the organization, vertices and edges. Most often, this data is stored in physical tables, but it doesn't have to be. It really can also be exposed in form of, of views, for example, SQL views into a graph workspace where you can have some projection or transformation. It also can be um, some, some form of volatile data or temporary data that is created by uh, a SQL script um, uh, database procedure or, or table function um, then uh, exposed uh, into an, what we call an ad hoc graph. But essentially the green layer is what we need to have in place in order to expose the data to the HANA graph engine. The HANA graph engine then um, basically supports two stacks on top of that. And we are supporting a subset of the OpenCypher query language for pattern matching workloads. Um, OpenCypher is essentially a standard for pattern matching. It's been brought forward by Neo and it's a declarative language uh, where you have at least one component being then match clause that describes nodes and edges, that pattern that you're looking for. The other stack um, besides OpenCypher and pattern matching is our graph script um, language for writing um, database procedures, which also give you access to building graph algorithms. Those building graph algorithms let you um, identify neighborhood, that lets you do a breadth first search traversal, that lets you um, evaluate shortest path in different forms. We'll see that in a minute. These built-in algorithms are part of that graph script um, domain-specific language, uh, which you usually use to write domain-specific procedures using the graph language. And then finally, as I mentioned before, there's a SQL layer on top of these stacks that lets you integrate with our relational operations like a full text search or, or spatial analysis. Let's switch to a system and uh, see a couple of those examples. Um, so first of all, um, this is a database explorer. I do have um, an SAP HANA cloud system here in place, and let's play around with some, some dummy data. The first thing that we'll look Look at is um, how we uh, run open cipher queries. So what we need to do for that is are we creating two tables in this case, so one for uh, vertices, one for edges. They are not that broad, so they basically have an idea. Here's an attribute called name, and the edges on the table just uh, does uh, have the, the identifier and the source and the target. We are uh, populating those two tables with some dummy data. And then finally, we are creating the graph workspace, which essentially just points to the edges table and to the vertices table. So let's just run that. And what we do see is that we now have a graph workspace uh, available. Uh, let's just view it. 
nothing too fancy, nothing too complex. This is the graph that we just created. So now um, looking at the Cypher query language. So we wrapped um, Cypher into a SQL table function, uh, which is called uh, Open Cypher Table. And it is required two parameters. Um, you need to point it to the graph workspace. So the thing that we just created and the other parameter is essentially the query. And the query now follows that, that um, declarative open cipher syntax where you do have a match clause that describes the pattern in this kind of ACR form where you have nodes represented in these brackets and then you have edges which connect these nodes. And you usually have a where condition where you apply filters and then you have a return clause um, which controls which information is returned. So in this case, I'm just looking for the neighbors um, of the node with the ID 4. So if I run that query, the result is simple. The, the first node um, is the node with the ID 4 and these are all the neighbors. And if I go back onto the picture, to the graph that we have just made, okay, we were looking at number four. So um, which are the neighbors? It's two, three, and five. It's two, three, and five. Um, that's a very basic uh, open cipher query. Now then there is the idea of um, doing some basic aggregations like count or sum and stuff like that, so, which is controlled here. So in this case, I'm counting um, the common neighbors between uh, a node with ID four and any other two hop connected uh, node. So if I run that, I do see there is one common neighbor between uh, ID four and two. So again, going back to the picture between um, four and two, there's, they share one common neighbor, which is three. And then between the node four and one, there are two common neighbors, which these nodes share. Then there is idea of a um, limited length path. So you could say, okay, I'm looking for a connection between node N1 and node N2. And there should be two or three hops which connect these two nodes. And uh, you can check um, that path essentially by using this uh, expression here. So if I run that query, um, again, I'm starting with a node number one. I do see that there is a connection between node one and node three. And that connection is very simple. It's a direct one where I'm going from one to three. Whereas there's also a connection between one and four, which um, for example, goes via one, three, four. This is the path that you're taking here. Last but not least for the open cipher table, um, with regards to the result, you can also use uh, this syntax to um, create a JSON result. So if I run that query, not too fancy, you'll see it's, uh, the result is, is JSON formatted. That was OpenCypher. Now let's take a look at GraphScript, so our language for database procedures. Um, what I'm doing here is um, I'm also creating uh, 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 some, some tables and uh, populate with data. And then we're creating a graph workspace. But now instead of using the OpenCypher table um, function, we are creating a database procedure. And if you're familiar with SQL script, kind of with this very same approach, just for the graph domain. Those database procedures do accept uh, input parameters and output parameters. And for my first example, I just want to demonstrate the neighbors function. So uh, what I'm doing here is um, I have one input parameter, which uh, gives me a start vertex. So the idea of a, of, a, of a node, where to start from. Then I'm looking at the minimum depth and maximum depth. So that is the number of hops I want to um, take from that start vertex. There is an additional parameter controlling the direction. So by default, we are just traversing outgoing edges. With that direction parameter, I can also say it traverse incoming direction, uh, incoming edges or edges in any direction. What that procedure um, produces as an output is, first of all, a set of vertices, the neighbors that I uh, can reach um, by taking a certain number of hops. Uh, then the procedure um, returns the number of vertices that have been reached, and it also returns the set of edges between the neighboring nodes. That is kind of the signature of the procedure. Now let's look at uh, uh, into detail. 
So what I need to do um, in order to run that neighbors um, procedure, first of all, I instantiate um, the graph by simply referring to the graph workspace that I made up before. The next thing I'm doing is I'm instantiating the start vertex by um, handing in um, the identifier, the ID that was an input parameter. And uh, here comes the final uh, function call where I'm saying, okay, I do call out to the built-in neighbors function, which operates on my graph, which starts at the start vertex, which traverses a number of minimum hops up to a number of maximum hops, um, traversing the edges in that um, given direction. What that returns is what we call a multiset. It's a container. It's just a set of nodes, essentially. And what you can do with these sets of nodes, of course, you can project it. Um, so um, we are just deriving the ID and the name for all the vertices in that um, set. We are applying a count on that set. And um, finally, in order to derive all the edges between the nodes, we are calling that edges function, where we're essentially looking for all the edges in my graph, which have a source in my set of neighbors and a target in the set of neighbors. And also we're projecting them out. So how does that look like? Um, let's create it up to here. So we do have um, two uh, calls uh, to the procedure that we just created. So first of all, we're starting at vertex number two, and we're traversing um, one hop up to one hop in outgoing direction. So what that produces is that we are arriving at node number three or four. Let's quickly verify that. So we are starting at node number two. So we get to three and four within one hop. This is the um, one edge between um, the two nodes. This is that one between three and four. And as a result, we do see um, two vertices returned. So, of course, different parameters lead to different results. What I usually do if um, you want a better handle on that neighbors function, that's, which is wrapped in that procedure, is you creating a SQL script function around it in order to get away from that call statement, which you need to issue into a select statement. So this is um, nothing graph specific. It's just uh, a neighbors function, which essentially calls out my procedure, which I just given, and um, then does some post-processing, what could say. So in my example, I'm just joining the two um, return tables, so the vertices and edges. But in a more advanced um, scenario, you could think about a spatial analysis or some form of aggregation of that result set that you derive from these neighbors. Uh, the nice thing about um, this wrapping into a function is, is that you can now use it in a select statement. So now I'm selecting from my neighbors function and the signature is basically very similar as we had before in the procedure. And now that select function gives me a table.